בסדר, אז ערב טוב לכולם. שומעים אותי בסוף? זה בסדר ככה או ש... מעולה. בגלל שאנחנו מצלמים פה, יש למישהו התנגדות שנעשה את זה באנגלית? מה? רק את הצילום באנגלית לא, כשאני אדבר באנגלית במקום בעברית, אז אחר כך יהיה לנו יותר אאוטריץ'. אבל אם יש למישהו התנגדות, אז אפשר להישאר בעברית, זה בסדר. נשתדל. בסדר, אז uh, נתחיל באנגלית ומקסימום uh, שאלות וזה אחר כך uh, נעשה בעברית. אוקיי, אז היום אנחנו נדבר על גוגל קלאוד פלטפורם, פלטפורם, ובאופן כלל יש כמה חדשים ודברים שאני חושב שהם נכון לדבר עליהם. שומעים דווקא? בסוף. לא? עובד? Great, so um, we'll speak today about the Google Cloud Platform. Um, I'll try to cover most of the things in the next 40 minutes, and then we'll leave 15, 20 minutes for question and answers. Um, most of the times I find this part the most uh, uh, interesting one, so hopefully we'll have enough time for it. If someone has a question afterwards, um, you are most welcome to just uh, ping me at uh, plus greenied on Google Plus or on Twitter or through GitHub or WordPress or whatever channel uh, that you prefer. What I'm doing in Google right now is a solution architect for cloud platform. Uh, up to three, years, uh, three months ago, I was a developer advocate. The title doesn't really matter what it means, that I'm now more focusing on startup in, that are a bit in a more less, late stage. And I'm trying to help them to do the best things in terms of building the new solution on Google Cloud Platform. Luckily for us today, we have many different opportunities and lots of different Uh, startups with different needs could leverage uh, the benefits of uh, the cloud. So what we'll do here, uh, we'll just try to give a quick uh, background and a motivation why it's a very lucrative offering to try uh, Google uh, Cloud Platform. Then we'll dive into Google App Engine. I find it most uh, interesting to see people with the wrong perception about App Engine. To me, it's one of the big uh, missed things in this story of what you could achieve today in the cloud. And it's saving you lots of legwork. Uh, so I really try to identify what are the sweet spot here and what will be the best uh, breed for your next solution, next app, next RESTful API. Uh, last but not least, we'll just touch about the new updates that we have today, uh, like Compute Engine, Google Cloud Storage, BigQuery, Prediction API, and many, many, many more. So when we're talking about scale, I mean, uh, here we're usually doing a Q&A question, a Q&A section. Um, I'll just try to go over it briefly. Uh, the main outcome from this slide that it's, it's pretty huge. Uh, these numbers are, uh, you could see, are for 12 months ago or uh, 24 months ago, um, quite huge numbers. And actually, they are going uh, in an increasing pace. So it's just very, very big. Um, when we're talking about uh, scaling, we all, always want to touch about the uh, innovation. And here, actually, Google can be extremely proud of itself that most of the things here actually started the revolution of big data and cloud um, uh, movement. When you're talking about uh, GFS, Google File System, and MapReduce, and Bigtable, those are the initial papers that started Hadoop and all the revolution that we see in this area. And you can see here that the pace is actually increasing. And what's good about it is that right now, Google is actually letting you, as external developers, enjoy from the same set of tools and frameworks that up to recently, only Google engineers could enjoy. Uh, when we're speaking about scaling and innovation, the third uh, angle here is uh, security. Um, data centers, this is one uh, photo that Google released last year from, the, from Carolina, from the US, are uh, in most of the time are extremely secure, um, lots of certifications, and here it's uh, coming to show that it's uh, security out of this world. Um, it's not really true, but uh, it's uh, the motivation to just make sure that uh, it's the best in breed. By the way, an anecdote, Uh, even Google engineers uh, 
quite in high levels can't just go and uh, visit the cloud uh, data centers. It's only those people that are dedicated to it that are allowed to enter there. And uh, Google is building everything in a proprietary manner. So everything is built for our own needs to be able to uh, make sure that the search is working in the quality that you all recognize and familiar with. Uh, YouTube and all the other services are running on the same solutions or the same um, machines, uh, virtual machines, that you are going to run your apps. Um, just to try and uh, set the lay of the land, uh, usually we are uh, just uh, giving those three main aspects, and I guess most of you are familiar with the uh, first one, the IAS, which is the infrastructure. And uh, there, of course, we see a huge popularity in Amazon EC2, which gives you basically the ability to do whatever you like. Uh, luckily for us today, we have Google Compute Engine, and later on I'll touch why it's similar or in lots of cases better. We have the software as a service where you could recognize many, many different uh, applications that are today giving you the ability to be more productive when you're working on a specific certain app. Up until recently, and I'm speaking about the last, let's say, six years, there was a big, big difference between a web app and a desktop app. You could see it going more and more through the way of utilizing the browser more and more and getting native abilities in the browser that giving you the ability to enjoy from web apps that are actually better than the native apps. Think about mail, about maps, and about lots of different things uh, that were with the huge gap between the desktop or the native application and how they are looking today on the desktop inside Chrome or any other modern browser. Um, when we're speaking about platform as a service, there's a very interesting way here because you gain lots of control by allowing yourself to do what you do best, and that's coding your API or your app. On the other hand, someone else is taking care of all the big balagan of uh, administrative work, of scaling, of making sure that you are now not the best system administrator in the world, but just focusing on what moves the needles for you, and that's your specific use case. So in the past, we could see lots of uh, different players here that uh, actually made lots of improvement and lots of uh, uh, revolutions, small revolutions, inside this uh, big arena. And uh, we were going to focus on, of course, Google solutions, but there are many others out there that are just letting you as a developer to be more productive. Um, luckily, or uh, when we're talking about and uh, checking Google uh, Cloud Platform, uh, there are many, many aspects of uh, Google Cloud Platform in the SaaS environment. All the services that you know Google for, like Maps, YouTube, Gmail, Calendar, Docs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in this talk, we just uh, focus on those two because I think uh, it's much more compelling for your um, as developers and as startups as entrepreneurs just to see how they could help you. So we touch about the comprehensiveness, and in terms of integration of the platform, we'll see later on why it's beneficial to work with one component and how it's uh, related to the other. Uh, it's very important that, to know that basically your apps on App Engine, for instance, will work on the same environment with the same system administrators that are taking care of them with other services that Google itself is producing, and of course, any improvement that we are doing, and it's constantly being done, are pushed beneath the legs for you, so you're enjoying them. Um, here is just uh, the most uh, important things that I uh, wanted to put on one slide, but there are many, many more. Um, today we have on the compute section, Google App Engine, which is platform as a service, but then you have Compute Engine, which is giving you virtual machines, uh, Debian and CentOS, just to do whatever you like with them. Um, on the storage front, we have cloud storage, which is basically the biggest NoSQL database in the world. We have Cloud SQL for the ones that just want their MySQL to work with a very, very large SQL, uh, SQL databases, but keep their code of just talking with MySQL. Um, cloud start Data Store, again, giving you a very, very comprehensive, fast uh, NoSQL solution and working integrately with App Engine at best. And persistent disks. You have the ability to have uh, disks, very large disks, it could be 10 terabyte, that are connected to the compute engine, and then when you're stopping machines or putting them in the app, your persistent disk is still there. You don't need to uh, worry about migration or other things. On the app services, uh, you have lots of uh, very compelling services that you could leverage in your apps and build on top of them. BigQuery basically giving you uh, Hadoop as a service, but very rapid one. It's more like Impala, so giving you the ability to crunch 
gigabyte, terabyte of data and get results back in a matter of seconds. Uh, cloud endpoints, it's something that it's very, very lucrative, specifically for mobile developers, but also for web developers. Basically, you're getting a full REST API environment to work and build your next API on top of Google infrastructure and enjoying all the benefits that new API that Google is putting out, your API will have. So all the discoverability, all the maintainability, the ability to test and to share the same API between the backend team and the front end team, it's all giving you for free when you're building it on top of a cloud endpoint. And by the way, I'll give a link for it because in the last two Google IOs, I, made, I did talks that specifically uh, um, emphasizing the importance and the benefits of uh, leveraging Google Cloud Endpoint. Caching, we have dedicated memcache, we have shared memcached, and it actually it's saving huge amount of money for lots of organizations because it's a very compelling um, API in terms of the monetization and the cost that Google is charging for it. Queues, and actually lots of other APIs are all available for you. Obviously when you're working in App Engine, you're having an, you are working in an encapsulate environment, you're working in a specific sandbox, and in most of the cases it's like when you're choosing a certain framework like Ruby on Rails for instance, you do need to do things in a certain way. So it's true that it's limiting you in the uh, configuration, but it's definitely uh, beneficial because some really smart people took a lot of decisions for you. So of course, if you like your own way and you want to choose and be uh, the ones that are taking the shots, probably Compute Engine will be much better. But if you are willing to work inside this specific sandbox, you'll gain a huge amount of productivity. Uh, it's very similar to what uh, going on when people are choosing a specific framework like Ruby on Rails or Cake or any other framework. Um, when we're speaking about cloud, of course, there's all the infrastructure impact, but one of the most uh, important ones is the network. And um, I guess it's quite needless to say, but uh, Google got its own fiber, um, best in breed, controlling everything between the data centers. So today you have the ability to actually choose where your instances will be launched, if it's Europe or US. But um, in lots of cases, it doesn't really matter because the response times are amazingly fast. Um, this is one of actually the boldest uh, argument why you want to share and uh, build your next app on this uh, platform. Um, I think it's a very, very compelling argument just to know that in the end of the day, the same virtual machines with all the meta infrastructure that are keeping them running, running 24 7 are actually under the arms of the developers that choose to leverage it. And the quote here is just uh, from the Weird magazine. Um, now we'll just dive into uh, App Engine and see uh, what things are new and uh, hot in it. So when we're talking about App Engine, or what was the main motivation when Google uh, introduced it, it was that we found out that for internal uh, applications that engineers want to build, they're spending a huge amount of time just with all the other aspects. And I'll give an anecdote of my personal story. Before my Google days, I was with Yahoo. And back in Yahoo, I did a project that was called pipes.yahoo.com. You're almost welcome to check it uh, today. It's still up and running. It's basically a mashup UI interface to have pipes, like in Unix, but for RSS, XML, and any structured data out there. And when we wanted to launch the service, and Yao was a, an old company back in 2005, we needed actually to do all the things that you see here on our own. And it's exactly like reinventing the wheel again and again and again. And each new team that you are entering, you need to come with the best practices of, OK, what is the best reverse proxy now? Is it squid? Is it HA proxy? Do I need to use varnish? How I configure the varnish? What should I do there? And you're going and actually finding yourself, again, doing lots of administrative Unix uh, work that actually doesn't really move the needle for you. Because what you want to do now is building this amazing UI interface that will make people uh, productive in the specific task that they want to solve. And you're all, I guess, aware that you do need the uh, master SQL and all the slave. And if you have a few data sets, data centers in data sets, you need just to replicate it and to have master master configuration. Lots of headaches. Um, and that's just emphasizing, again, the same thing. Uh, let's say that you are on a lamp based environment. You just want the stack up there in order to start and build what you need. And basically, you need to carry everything in place. Um, and I guess that I found lots of developers that mistakenly comparing apples to bananas when they are coming to just 
looking at App Engine and comparing it to infrastructure as a service solution. So please, if you're going and measuring now, let's say before the next project that you are doing, um, some environments that are out there, and it could be Amazon, it could be Rackspace Cloud, it could be Google, it could be any others, just make sure that you are checking platform as a service versus platform as a service, and not infrastructure as a service, because in the total cost of ownership, and when you are coming to just crunch all the numbers of how efficiency you will be, not just in the development phase, but also in the uh, production phase, it's a totally different ball game. Um, today we have four environments on App Engine. So it used to be Java, Python, and Go. And from last Google I.O., PHP was uh, joining the party uh, with the GA. So um, basically, you could choose uh, the best uh, platform that you are working with. And of course, because it's uh, based on JVM, so people that uh, like Scala or people that just want any other languages, and I think that last time I checked, there was more than 20 different languages that are running on top of the JVM, could probably run it. Um, Include the JavaScript, of course, that could run inside Rhino. And if you are one of the Node.js favorite guys, um, it could be on Compute Engine very easily. I uh, posted a tutorial on it, so uh, please feel free. Um, one of the things that you are encapsulated in the sandbox is to work with the rules that the sandbox uh, set for you. And why it's that? Because in the end of the day, uh, Google is wearing the pagers, and system administrators from Google want to maintain and scale your app automatically. And that's why you basically have to use Google APIs. So you do have the ability to do almost everything that you like with other uh, environments. You just need to do them, do them in the right way uh, and just talk with Google-specific uh, APIs. Um, basically, um, it's working in a way that um, it's not uh, very controllable uh, for in your hands. What you do have is a very nice administrative console that will let you basically find the golden path between the amount of money that you want to invest and the performances that you're getting. So you do have the ability to launch multiple instances, and then the response time will be very fast, or just to sit idle and let this app master take the best decisions for you. And then some users, maybe at the beginning, before the instances are launches, will get a, a bit slower response time, but then all the others will get an amazingly throughput. And the app master is basically sitting on the front end, and for each and every request that we are getting, we'll do the best in breed in order to solve this request. So if it will be to static files, usually it will be from uh, a memcache or any static uh, file server that is sitting on the front end. If it will be some request to the app server to analyze and to work with internal API, then it will follow it. And of course, just to talk again with all the other different APIs that uh, Google providing. In this box, by the way, if you are using Cloud Endpoint, you could just add your own APIs to this box and speak with them directly. Again, exactly like you're speaking with any other API that Google is providing. Um, this is the administrative co administration console, but it's a very old p uh, picture. Uh, I should probably update it. Today, basically, the main change is that you have many, many more options here on the uh, left uh, sidebar. Just to give uh, some aspect by numbers, um, App Engine is growing very, very rapidly. I guess lots of other companies and developers outside of Google um, starting to grasp why it's such a lucrative uh, proposition. And uh, today we have more than 3 million active applications on it. So it's not just uh, some applications that someone tries test the water and then uh, abandon them. There are applications that are really working. And um, this is another uh, some crazy number that is out there. Um, it's a very, very common. Um, seven and a half billion hits, uh, even in Google standards per day, not per month. So even in Google standards, it's quite huge and a huge, huge number of uh, data store requests. These are just uh, some of the main uh, player that are willing to uh, be on the slide. And I highly encourage you to check uh, Khan Academy. Uh, they had a very, very deep, thorough post on why App Engine uh, play for their hands when they have uh, huge scaling issues uh, when, they are, they, when they were presented on uh, 60 Minutes. Um, some crazy numbers of query per second. In terms of uh, long-term scaling, uh, we have some uh, quick examples. Uh, the, the main outcome here is that when you do have the luck and lots of users are coming for your 
mobile app, social app, any app that you made, uh, probably App Engine uh, will do everything for you and you won't need to worry about it. Um, this is just one example, quite old one. Uh, Gigia, it's an Israeli startup uh, that basically have always the scaling issues because each time that they have a new widget on a new site with new audience, they have this spike and then it's uh, going uh, down. Um, the royal scaling, the royal wedding, there were crazy amounts of uh, hits in that specific day. And it's a very, very uh, nice case study because to create because for them to create the same infrastructure just to be handled this load would have cost millions of pounds. And uh, with Google App Engine, it costs like 10% of it or even less. All the case study, by the way, it's here for someone that wants to just dive into it a bit more. Um, but you know, in these days, uh, most of the cases that your user will use uh, your app, not necessarily through the web or through the desktop, it might be mobile device. And actually, with the growing pace, it will be mobile device. And um, I guess one of the best things to try now is uh, the mobile backend. The mobile backend is basically sit on top of uh, Google App Engine and letting you as a developer get started very quickly. So with uh, few clicks, you'll be able to download it and start it. And it will give you a naked project with the client side and the server side that will talk to each other. And um, it's go growing very, very fast. Um, the samples, and just to play with it, the link is down in the slide. Um, when we're talking about scale, uh, I'm sure you're all aware, but uh, Angry Birds launched uh, three years ago their web version. And actually, it worked quite nicely in Chrome. And it's one of these modern web apps that are installing themselves at the beginning. So the first time that you're reaching to chrome.angrybird.com, it will download those 120 megabytes of assets. And then later on, when you open Chrome in the flight or any place that you don't have connection, it still works perfectly. Um, and of course, when you are connected again, it will sync and give all the ranking and all the meta information of your game. Everything there is uh, running on top of uh, Google App Engine as well. And they have some really clever usage in uh, the Java environment. And the framework that they used in order to build it is open source. So just uh, check it out on uh, GitHub. Uh, Snapchat, uh, the number here is actually low. They have much higher. Also working on uh, App Engine. And um, it's one of those amazing apps that are just keep scaling and scaling um, up. Pop song for the ones that doesn't know, serve 18 tera per day, again, from App Engine. Um, on Cloud Endpoint, we won't have time to cover too uh, many aspects of it. But uh, the main thing is that with uh, one source code, you could basically, on the server side, of course, you could basically create and maintain your API, and then later on, leverage and use it from the different environment that are probably on your list. So it doesn't matter if you now want to initiate the mobile first approach and try to target Android users or iOS users or web users. With the same code of maintaining your RESTful API, you'll be able to gain with one click library, a client side library that will speak and interact with your API. So it's quite revolutionary. It's really, really neat. And the nice thing about it is that once you're doing it, all the integration between the front end team and the back end team and all the ability to test your API is basically uh, giving you uh, a very easy, rapid pace to do so, uh, very similar to any new API that Google is releasing. And of course, the link here just will uh, give you the tutorial that will uh, uh, pass you through all the steps. Um, what you could do on App Engine, uh, lots of different things. We find that uh, lots of apps in the academia arena are being done on App Engine. Uh, Khan Academy is just one tiny example. Uh, of course, many, many business apps, uh, internal apps uh, are being done there. And of course, with uh, cloud endpoints, lots of lots of uh, mobile gaming, logging, and infrastructure, or speaking with a different uh, component that you have on your private cloud or any different uh, place are being done. And of course, all the social mobile games. In terms of locked in, and usually this is one of the uh, threats or common uh, misunderstood uh, things, people are being reluctant just to put effort because then you'll be locked to that platform. It's quite 
the opposite. So of course there are few things that you need to know because if you are now developing in Java two app engine, you are taking certain consideration. But in terms of the data or the locking, it's definitely not there and you definitely have the ability to move it to any other place that you wish at any point of time. And in Google DNA basically, you have the ability to control all the data that you have and I know that there are lots of teams internal in Google that are doing very, very hard work just to enable you to do one click and download everything that you have in Google. It could be all Gmail, all calendar, all docs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Peter uh, Mangson, which is the uh, lead uh, product manager for um, cloud, just wrote a very uh, thoughtful piece on it. So if you want to read it and see how we are opening the data, it's up here. Um, yeah, so we do need to uh, just take into consideration that, of course, if you're using specific APIs, similar to any other environment that you'll use, uh, it could be Heroku, it could be any other else, um, definitely you need to make some decisions. And then, in a way, you could look, look at it as a lock-in. But in general, uh, if you're having your data in a data store or in the Google Cloud SQL, uh, you have the ability to do uh, everything you like. The PHP SDK, for instance, is open source and it's on GitHub. So if you want now to have this, the same PHP SDK that you are coding to on App Engine, on different environment because you just want more control and have a private cloud because of regulations, you could definitely do that as well. Um, in terms of pricing, um, the link here will give you much more detailed information. But just to know that we do have this free tier, so you could test up to 10 apps on Google App Engine without paying anything. And on different certain aspects of Google Plat Cloud Platform, you usually do need to put a credit card um, because, for instance, to test Compute Engine, you do need to put it, but the uh, cost there is uh, very, very tiny if you just want to test and see how it's working. Um, the ability to charge only on the specific minutes that you use, not on a full hour, is uh, very lucrative because lots of developers could just have this amount, tiny amounts on the time that they really use, and not just generally you're launching an instance and you now charge for an hour, but you use it just for 10, 15 minutes. Um, some organizations are really keen and care about it, so um, lots of different uh, certificates are now uh, being uh, produced, um, especially for fin finance or any other big enterprises out there. And of course, you have the ability to choose uh, from the US to the uh, EU uh, data centers. In terms of roadmap, uh, those are the main things that hopefully will be in the next uh, two quarters. Uh, more integration with compute engine. So if you have the need to just go out from the sandbox of uh, App Engine and use, let's say, Hadoop because you have uh, certain needs for it, or use Node.js because you have this new app that you built on top of it, um, the integration will be much, much tighter. It's already there today, but it will be better in terms of uh, moving your code and controlling it. Um, Servlet 3 and uh, more and more VM and technologies that will be uh, baked into uh, Compute Engine. By the way, the link there is open and it's keep refreshing and keep uh, uh, the new news there. So if you want to, uh, to make sure that you are updated, this is the place. Um, other things that I uh, find very lucrative just to check and see, uh, of course, there are many, many of them. But if you want support, usually most of uh, Google developer advocate or developer en engineers, people that are working with external developers, will be very active on Stack Overflow. So just try there your luck. And uh, of course, if you can't find the answer there, uh, just feel free to ping me. Um, usually, if I don't know the answer, I probably might be able to just get you in touch with uh, someone that knows the answer. The cloud blog, of course, contains all the different uh, updates about the improvements, and it's quite active. And of course, social with G+, and all the other uh, aspects are there as well. Today, you could uh, even check and test the water without downloading anything. Up to recently, you needed to download the SDK, to work with it, to do lots of things uh, in order just to test it. Uh, with the cloud playground, you could just go to this URL, play with it, and see if it's working for you. Um, very quick way to just test the water. 
Um, some new updates about the platform as a whole. So we touch about App Engine and how you could integrate it with different aspects of the cloud. Uh, one new thing that you have now is the ability to just uh, speak uh, with different uh, with different applications that Google is offering you. And usually it's being done with uh, AppScript. AppScript is uh, basically JavaScript that's running inside Google Docs and letting you a very, very nice way to integrate your external app or applications that are sitting on uh, App Engine um, and then come up with a very nice, quick applications that are being able to integrate well with Calendar, Gmail, Docs, and all the other APIs out there. Another two APIs that I highly encourage you just to check out and see if they are beneficial for you are the prediction API, the translate API, that giving you basically the best in breed prediction API that are out there as a service. So you're giving it a testing data and then you're getting predictions. A very, very uh, strong API that I see lots of people that are trying it, actually enjoying uh, the benefits that it's letting them. And uh, BigQuery, of course, that giving you amazing, amazing uh, results in terms of crunching big, big data and getting uh, results uh, in a matter of seconds. When we're talking about computer engine, uh, basically you're getting uh, everything that you used to in other infrastructure as a services. So the ability to launch your own instances, to get a snapshot, an image, and then to launch a new one. Um, you have a very large persistent disks. And it's very, very similar to any cloud uh, infrastructure that you used up to now. What it does very, very well is just to ensure you that the performances will be quite lucrative. So if you're checking it versus other cloud environment, and in this link it's uh, versus uh, EC2, uh, you could see here that the numbers are really, really compelling, including the pricing that I didn't put here, but you are most welcome to check it out. So the latency, the bandwidth, and of course the uh, computation itself. Um, two other uh, very, very nice uh, new additions, that they're not that new, but uh, I see more and more people are now uh, checking them out, is um, the cloud uh, storage. And basically it's a very easy RESTful API that's giving you the ability to just put everything that you want out there, um, basically unlimited, um, and a very, very rapid, uh, latency and uh, performances when you are approaching it. Um, everything there is, of course, uh, being able to work through dedicated API on App Engine or a RESTful API or a client library. Cloud SQL, we touch about it. It's just to make sure that people that are already hooked into MySQL want to work fast with the same code base that they already have. And right now, you have the ability um, through App Engine or through to Compute Engine to work with them. Um, data store, uh, we touch about it, it's the biggest uh, NoSQL uh, database out there. Uh, got some amazing performances and abilities. And if you're working with um, Google App Engine, it's probably the most native way to work and store your data to a persistent layer. But of course, you are most welcome to choose any other uh, um, service that we have today. And Translate, we touch about it uh, for the ones that need. In terms of uh, BigQuery, uh, the nice thing about BigQuery is that after you'll take this tour, probably 10 minutes, uh, you'll see the advantages there. Uh, we do have solutions today to take big data and push it to BigQuery. It could be the streaming API, and it could be large CSV files, and you could code against it, so we have a very simple, uh, nice, restful API for it. Prediction API, um, again, for specific needs of analyzing behavior or logging or any other things that you want to come up with, um, the best in breed algorithms are just working for you. Um, fusion tables, I'll just skip because we don't have too much time, but basically it's a very nice mashup between maps and um, Google Sheets. And Course Builder is basically uh, an open source project that's giving you the ability to see all the benefits that you spoke about um, that are running on uh, App Engine. You could, of course, get it and uh, just uh, try and see what are the things that are done there, and then just uh, think if it will work for you for your needs. Um, and of course, uh, you have the, um, the class registration for this app that just giving you phase by phase what are the different uh, stages in order to build such an app. 
Um, I touched about it really briefly, and hopefully in the future we'll do a much uh, larger talk about it. But AppScript, or if you go to script.google.com, basically giving you the glue to just tie up all the different services and API that Google letting you, and quite quickly produce a new, uh, a new application that could work for your needs. Uh, work perfectly, by the way, with Google Sheets, Gmail, calendar integration, everything that you want to do around there. There's some very nice tutorials that are showing you how you're building a quick CRM or uh, um, education testing system for teachers, uh, some really, really nice um, applications. Um, this is just to show the example how easy it is to just create a list and send maps with emails um, through AppScript. In terms of APIs, there are many, many more. Um, I thought on this slide just to summarize everything. And by the way, all the slides are already live. I'll give the link at the end. Um, the first two or the first three, or maybe some will argue that the first four are the most popular ones and with a big opportunity. But I would argue that all of them have these niches, the very, very nice, interesting niches uh, to drive technology forward. So the slides are actually on this uh, third link, so ido-green on appspot.com. And if you want to reach me, those are the two best channels to do it. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> so I guess we have time for uh, question and answer. So if someone has any questions, please. About the app suite, how, how can you run them? What is the whole thing about it? Can you run it from uh, Google App Engine, for example? Yeah, so the question was, uh, how can I run or where can I run my AppScript? And the answer is that AppScript are running basically on a similar environment to App Engine, but it's fully controlled by Google, so you can't really take them and put them in App Engine. Where they're running, if you're entering into Google Docs or Google Sheets, you're going to Tools and then Script Editor, and then you have a full IDE inside the browser with a version control, with all the things that you'll want to see in an IDE with a debugger, with everything. And basically there, it will run. So you'll have the ability there to run the things. It's currently with a few limitations. So you can't, it's, personal. it's totally personal. You could put it, you can, because you have the ability there to publish it. And then we have a marketplace, like any other marketplace. And you could just publish it, and other users could use it. So one of the most popular apps that we have there today is uh, Stat on Gmail. It's a very, very cool one, actually. So it's giving you a monthly email with all the things that you want to know and don't want to know about your habits with Gmail. How many emails you receive, what the throughput, where, how many you answer, how much time it took you, and so on and so forth. Um, when you're publishing it, basically, you are acquiring users that wish to use it to authorize it. But once they authorize it, they can run it. And of course, they have all the code. The Google Drive SDK just giving you the ability to write applications and clients with Google Drive. Uh, different thing. Okay. Only yeah. The Sorry? In any case, only for the browser. In Google Apps Script, yeah, correct. Exactly. Fully support ebook? Fully support ebook? Hebrew, it's a great point that you're reaching. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's OK. Um, it supported Hebrew. It's actually uh, supporting lots of different localizations. Um, but we do have uh, major issues when we're coming to work with uh, right to left. So on some, on some aspects, it's, it's quite well today. But on others, and specifically if you're hitting them, I would love to know about it, because then we are just having really great relationships with the engineers that are supporting it. So we could fix it quite quickly. So if you do have uh, any request or you're hitting walls with the support from right to left languages, in our case it will be Hebrew, just please let me know. Uh, we could definitely fix them. Great. So we're almost, almost done. Um, there's a startup pack. So basically you have the ability to just test the water um, up to this limit. And oops. And I'll put the link uh, a bit more just so nice, just so you'll be able to see it and uh, capture it. And it will give you up to $1,000 on Apple Engine and another $1,000 on Compute. And if you see the pricing, it could give you quite uh, long mileage. Uh, it's not uh, that uh, hard. This is the promo code, and this is the link. Um, and I guess our time is up. Yes, just last one. Last one. <laughs> OK, please. 
<laughs> so the question was if it's uh, App Engine, I guess, supports SOAP connections. So yes, definitely. Everything that's on top of HTTP or HTTPS basically will run perfectly. So yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.